In this presentation, we're going to record the donation of office space to our not-for-profit organization. So in other words, we had someone that donated not cash, but office space into the not-for-profit organization. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our not-for-profit dashboard. We're going to jump on over to our Excel file to see what our objective will be. We're currently in tab one. So we're in tab one here to record our transaction or see the accounts that will be affected. So it's a, we have the office space donated market rent value is the 35800 So note if there's going to be a donation of something such as office space, we don't have cash taking place, but there still is a donation. There's still a transaction that we need to be recording in this case now one problem with this of course is well how do i know how much to, the amount will be if there's no cash trading hands here they give an office space what is that how, how do i know well we're gonna have to use some kind of fair market judgment to determine the value of the office space so if we the not-for-profit organization are then using the office space then we have to appraise it or look at somehow uh, what the office space would be worth if it was a uh, transaction that was a market type of transaction so that we can value uh, what we should put it on the books for. So once that is decided, then we're going to be debiting or increasing the rent expense. So we're going to put it on the books basically as an expense because we're still consuming the office space. We're consuming the office space in order to achieve our objective, that objective to be, you know, the programs that we are supporting in our not-for-profit organization. The other side then go into our revenue type of account, which is contributions, not exactly revenue, but in essence revenue that's how we get money coming in we're tracking the inflow and that's through the contribution so we're going to call it contributions without donor restrictions so that's going to be down here on the income statement side of things that we're going to be recording that so the net effect on the income statement is actually null or the income statement or statement of activities because what we're saying is hey we got a contribution of thirty-five thousand eight hundred, and we consumed it because we're using it for rent and therefore, the net effect in, on the net income is nothing, right? Net, net effect is nothing on the net income. Income goes up. This is going up in the credit direction. That means a credit. And, the, and then the uh, expense is also going up. So no net effect. However, uh, we do have an effect on, of course, the income side of things and the expense side of things to record this transaction. Now, we also have this business of without donor restrictions. You might be asking, why would it be without donor restrictions? Because it's, it's clearly restricted by the fact that it's, it's rental property. What else are you going to do with it except use it for rental property? If it was cash, it would let, be less restrictive, wouldn't it? And that's true. If it was cash, it would be less restrictive. But when we say without donor restrictions here, we're basically saying that the donor, if it was restricted, the donor would have said, hey, you can only do this or use this for certain purposes. And that was, is the type of restriction we're talking about. So we're not talking about a restriction due to the kind of asset that the donor gave to us. We're going to be talking about a restriction due to uh, them actually restricting us on what we can do with that asset. So that's going to be uh, that characterization. Now, when we then uh, record this in our system, what we also want to do, how are we going to put this into the zero system? Well, notice there's no cash transaction. So there's no set form that we would generally be recording for this as we will see with other types of donations. And notice we started with a little bit more complex of a donation so that we can kind of get a broad view of some of these topics and these issues as we go into it. And then we'll get into some other donation transactions, of course, in the problem. But note that uh, we, we don't have a cash transaction, so we don't have our standard cash form that we can that we can we record on this. But we also still want to record the fact that whoever gave us the donation gave it to us so that we can so we can track it basically kind of like a customer list on who gave us money. So that means we still would like to use the standard form, the donation receipt type of form, even though cash is not affected. So rather than us just using a journal entry, as might be the easiest thing to do to affect these two accounts in our zero system, we're actually still going to use a receipt type of form so that we can then still provide that, uh, that input, that, uh, the, the increase in the receipt form. So I'm going to go back to zero here. So we're going to go back to zero. And that form, the typical form that we're going to be using when receiving donations, typically cash donations, is going to be in the plus button, and it's going to be the receive money form. Now, I do want to make one other change here before we do this, and that's going to be to add like a clearing account, because what I'm going to do here is, is this is receive money to, so that we can record the, the fact that a customer or a donor gave us money. 
and then I want to uh, be able to put that into the clearing account and then re-put it and then adjust it to where we want it to go, which is going to be the expense account. So we're going to do kind of a two-step process rather than a journal entry. To do that, we're going to set up another basically cash account. So I'm going to go back up top to the accounting item up top. We're going to go to the bank accounts. We're going to set up another bank account. This is just going to be a clearing account. When I say a clearing account, I mean it's going to go up and then directly back down uh, in a very short period of time. Not like a temporary account where it's going to go up in the whole period, but I'm talking one transaction, then the other right after each other back down to zero. So I'm going to add a bank account. I'm going to add a bank account here. And then again, we have to just basically choose an institution. So I'll just uh, choose an institution. And then we're going to say the account name. I'm going to call it a uh, cash clearing account. And the account type, I'm going to select the drop down, see what we have. I'm going to just say other for the account type. I'm just going to pick a number here for the account number. This is not the number of the chart of accounts, but just a, a number for the account number, which we're not going to put an actual in one in, but we need something populated to move forward. Then I'm going to go ahead and continue with that. So I'm going to hit continue to do so. There it is. If we then check it out in our chart of accounts, let's go to the accounting drop down now and go down to our chart of accounts. So now we have our chart of accounts and there is our clearing account. Now I should probably add an account number, so I'll make it 11. Uh, 10 so I'm going to click on it again and I'm going to go into the code and I'm going to call it uh, 1110 <laughs> 1110 and then we'll save that and so okay and there we have it and so now we have this clearing account so the clearing account means that I'm going to hit that when I when I expect the cash account to go or this cash account to be needed to just go up and then right back down rather than putting it into the checking account and therefore, if there's a problem, it'll be easier to see in the clearing account because the zero balance will no longer be zero. And we'll say, ah, something got messed up if the clearing account is not zero. Whereas if it was in the cash account, we wouldn't find it possibly until we do a bank reconciliation if something got messed up. So let's go back up top and let's, let's do this. We're going to hit the plus button. We're going to then go down to the receive money. We're going to receive money even though, yeah, we didn't receive money. But this is going to be able to track the donors that we have. So we're going to say receive money. I'm going to put it into the clearing account here, the cash clearing account, because it's going to be increasing and then decreasing. Then I'm going to say next. And then we're going to say, who did we get the money from? We will then set up just a generic donor. So this is someone that gave us the money. This isn't actually money. This is the, the rental property. And so I'm going to say donor one. And I want to set up a new contact for donor one. This would be an individual that's giving us uh, the rental property. So we set up donor one. I'm going to say the date is going to be 010120. And I'll keep the reference number, nothing on the reference number. Then we're going to select an item. Now, the items are things that we typically use if it's a for profit organization to record goods or services to populate things such as the receive money and invoices more easily. We're going to use the similar function here. We're going to set this up kind of like it was a service item so that we can easily record these, these donor transactions without really needing to understand the accounts affected, the debits and credits for it. So let's set up our item. So I'm going to say new item, please. We want to set up a new item here. The item code is going to be the donation. Item name, donation. And then we're going to have it as I sell this item. So I sell this item. We're not going to put a unit price because you know people can don donate whatever they want. Note that you might have some set donations. You might say, hey, this is a set donation price one, two, and three, or you can have an open donation and say, you know, you could donate what, what you want. If we had some set donations, we might make multiple donations, donation one, two, three, whatever our package might be. So then we're gonna say the sales account, dropping down for the sales account. Notice what we have here, we've got a revenue account. Now, what I'd like to see on the sales account is, is something other than revenue, right? I'm, I don't, or, or not sales, that sales sounds like revenue, right? We're supposed to call it like non-revenue stuff because this is a not-for-profit. We don't, we don't have the profit. So it's gotta be the contributions is what we would typically call it. Contributions uh, without donor restrictions. So what I wanna do, instead of adding a new account here, what I'd like to do is just change this account to be contributions without donor restrictions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up top. I'm going to duplicate this tab and I'm going to go to the chart of accounts uh, in it. So I'm going to right click on this tab, duplicate this tab. Then we're going to be in a new tab on the right. 
and let's go back up top and let's go to our chart of accounts. I'm going to select the accounting drop down, scroll down to the chart of accounts. Let's go into that chart of accounts. Let's find that revenue account, which we could go down to find it, or you could go to this little tab over here that says revenue. So this will just basically break out the chart of accounts just looking at the revenue accounts. There's the, the revenue account, the sales account. Let's go into the sales account. And then we're going to call this a different name. Now it should, it should remain as a sales type of account. So I've got, it's going to be either sales or revenue. It's got to be some kind of, so the default is to have a sales type of account. That's fine. The account number, we can keep it at the 4,000. I just want to change the name to not be sales, but contributions. And then I'm going to call it unrestricted, unrestricted. And obviously our example problem has like longer accounts here. They call it without donor restrictions which might be the more formal way we might have enough space for it but uh, we only have so many characters typically <laughs> so i'm going to say unrestricted make it a little bit smaller here so i'm going to say save and there we have that set up so now we have the name has been changed let's go back to the first tab then back to the first tab and now let's click off of here and see if we can go back on it and actually let's close this out and see if i do it again i'm going to go item and then say new item and then the item is going to be a donation and then i'm going to copy it copy paste and then we're going to choose the account which has now been changed right contributions there we have that's the one we want and then donations so all we want is the selling item obviously we're not selling it because we're not a for-profit but you know that's it's going to be the same kind of thing here so <laughs> And we're not purchasing it and we're not tracking this item that would be for inventory so that's all we need and we don't have any sales tax involved for a donation so we're going to say save you're going to give us money we're going to charge a sales tax oh, that'd be fun any case we're going to say here it is the amount is going to be 35800 35800 35800 there we have it and then we have the unrestricted and uh, restricted categories. I'm going to put everything into unrestricted and I'm just going to put it into fundraising. So I'm going to put it into fundraising. So on the unrestricted, these are the categories we set up. And there we have it. So, and let's change the date up top. I, I went back into it and I got rid of the date. So this is going to be January 1st, January 1st so there we have it so what's this going to do it's going to it's going to increase the uh it's going to increase that new clearing account by the 35800 the other side's going to go to the revenue kind of account which is going to be uh, the contribution account that we set up so let's go ahead and do it and see what happens we're going to say uh, save here we'll say save and then we're going to go to our accounts so I'm going to go to the second tab. Let's go to the second tab that we already have open here and, and look at our reports. So let's go to the accounting drop down. We want to take a look at that balance sheet report. So let's open up the balance sheet. We'll bring it out to January. So I'm going to bring this out to uh, January 31st and then update uh, that report. We'll update that report and scrolling down. So there we have it. So the clearing account has now been increased. So that increased the clearing account the other side is in the equity section because it's going to be on the PL, the profit and loss. So let's go back up top. I'm going to right click on the balance sheet. I'm going to right click on the balance sheet tab up top, duplicate it. So now we have the balance sheet on the right. Let's go back to the tab to the left then. And now let's open up our income statement, go into the accounting drop down and down to the income statement. So we'll go into that income statement. And this is running for uh, 2020, so that should be good. And then we have in the income line, we have the 35,000 for the contribution that is not restricted. And of course, that's all we have here. That total 35,800 then carries over to the balance sheet and is in the equity section. So the equity section of the balance sheet is being constructed or built from uh, the income statement. Now note, as we jump to these reports, I'm using them as the reports are formatted in terms of a for-profit organization. We'll talk more about the formatting of the reports uh, in the future. How can we change the name and customize the reports and make them, uh, let them uh, be presented in different ways. So we'll talk about that as we go, but um, that, that's what we have at this point. Now, what we want then is we want to then adjust this account, this amount out 
and take it then to the where we want it to go, which is going to be the expense report for rent expense. Let's take a look at one other report. I'm going to go back to the income statement, right click on this tab, duplicate this tab. Then I'm going to go back to the tab to the left. We're going to scroll up to the top and then we're going to go to the accounting drop down. We're going to go to the reports. Let's take a look at the reports. And then if we go down to the sales side, if you choose more items to see all the sales, you can go to the income by contact. Let's go into the income by contact report. And this will give us an idea of that income number be broken out by the donors, which is what we want. We want to be able to break this out by, you know, who gave us the money. So that in income by contact will break out the income number by who gave us the money. Or in this case, the rental property. Also note that if we, if we drill down on these numbers, that'll take us back to the source document. So if I go back into this number, I say here's the cash received form. That's the form that was used to generate this report. So I go into the cash received form and there's our document. So here's the, the transaction document. Also note that if we needed to give this form to somebody, we could then do so by going to uh, the options up top and say we wanted to view it as a PDF so that we can print it. I'm gonna say, okay, let's view it as a PDF and then it'll generate, I'm in uh, Chrome. So here's the document being generated within Chrome. And if we open that up, there it is. So there, there's our receipt. So we can use this now. It would be nice if we could do a little bit of formatting to make this, you know, a, a thank you type of, of form, a donor, but it does record basically the receipt that, that we have. So for the charitable type of organization. And of course we can generate reports as we saw the the report by uh by cash by customer or by donor so if i go back to our report then i'm going to go back out with the back button and back again back to our income by contact so again that's why we're going to use that form even though it went into this clearing account now we're going to take it out of the clearing account and we're going to be putting it to the rent expense account and so Let's go back to the first tab then. So we're gonna go back to the first tab and we're gonna say this is gonna be money out form. So we're gonna take it out of that clearing account. So I'm gonna hit the plus button over, over here. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna to go to the spend money this time. And again, no money's actually being spent. We're just taking this out of the clearing account, which is a cash type of account. It's gonna be coming out of the clearing account. So we're gonna pick the cash clearing account and then say next. And then we've got our, our information up top. So we're going to say, now this isn't going to go to anyone in particular. So we're going to, because it's going to be just a clearing account transaction. So I'm going to set up a vendor, just miscellaneous. It's going to go to the date 010120. And then I don't need an item to record this. I'm just going to record the amount. And so I'm going to say, this is going to be one and the price or the amount that's going to come out is that 35,800, 35,800. And then the other account is the account we wanted to go into, which is going to be the rent account, the expense account. So let's uh, hit the drop down. Let's see if they have one for rent expense. So we're looking for rent. So miscellaneous other, I don't see a rent expense. So let's go, let's try to type in there. Rent. Yeah, I don't see an account for rent. So we need an account number for it. So let's say we're going to put it under uh six one one five let's say six one one five so i'm going to add an account we're going to say the code is going to be six one one five the account is going to be an expense type of account so i'm going to select the drop down up top and we'll scroll down and we're looking for the expense type of account so we'll pick up the expense and this is going to be rent so we'll say rent expense and that's going to be it that's all we need here let's go ahead and say save so we'll say save and then this one uh, note i'm not going to put a category here and that means it's going to be uncategorized on the expense side of things we're going to have to categorize these things in accordance with a predetermined percentages and i'm going to go back at the end of the problem and record that that predetermined percent in our practice problem will be education 40 service 20 20 20 20. so we're going to be putting it into unrestricted so it's unrestricted because whenever we spend money, it's going to have to be unrestricted because we need to unrestrict it before we spend it. So if it was restricted, we'd have to unrestrict it. Then we will apply it out. But I'll show you how to do that at the end. I think it's going to be easier for us to input this information without first applying it and then go back in and apply them all one, one at a time. So then the date here is going to be January 1st. I think I tried to type it in in a format it didn't like. So I'm going to say January 1st, 
So there we have it. So what's this going to do? Decrease the clearing account back to zero and record the other side to rent expense. Let's go ahead and save it and then check it out. So we're going to say save. Then and let's make sure it's okay. Green, that's okay. It means it's good. So then we're going to go back to the balance sheet. Let's refresh this report or update it. So we'll update this report. Scrolling back down, nothing is in it now. Why? Because the two items are on the income statement. So if we go back to the income statement, update this report, we're going to have two line items, but one's an income, the other's an expense. So we have the contribution, which is basically income 35,800 going up, and then the rent expense uh, going up as well, which brings the net income back to zero. So from a, a standpoint of our journal entry, if we go back to Excel, that's what we expected to see. However, in order to have the form that we wanted to give the sales receipt and be tra tracking by donor, we had to do basically that two step process. And that's just gives an idea of, of some of our objectives. Now, most transactions, of course, hopefully the donations, a lot of them will be cash donations where we won't have to do that first two step transaction. We could basically just record that first uh, donation form for it. So that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.